Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hi everybody, uh, Pastor Everett. I just wanted to uh, uh, break into your night for a second and uh, I want to talk to you about a very uh, uh, good verse from the scripture. Uh, I want to look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and I'll be reading from the King James Version um, tonight. And uh, So let's just dig, dig right into the word here. Uh, it says, Ephesians 2 verse 8, it says, For by grace are you, are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is, a, it is the gift of God. Amen. Let's just pray. Father, I pray that you open up our understanding, our heart, our eyes, and our ears, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I'm really excited about this, this little message. And... Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I have a question, and uh, I'm saved, now what? Uh, and that's a very good question, and uh, uh, the first word I have for you is actually uh, saved tonight. And the question that goes, uh, that really comes to mind as I, as I kind of dive into this scripture a little bit, is uh, uh, the question is, you know, does one prayer really change everything for us? And... Uh, or is it merely just the beginning? Uh, because I, I think most of us think that we can get a quick fix. Like, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to McDonald's, I'm going to get some meal, and I want it in four minutes, and I want it my way, or that's Burger King. But, <laughs> but you get the point. You know, we want everything uh, to happen in our lives, like in an instant. And uh, really, that's not really the way life is really lived. We live life, actually, all of us live on a level playing field. We all have 24 hours every day. And what you do in those 24 hours, uh, you know, so we work, we eat, we, we, we sleep, hopefully we take a shower. Uh, you know, we, we have these routines that we get into uh, and we spend a lot of time every day. I think most of us, uh, if we're really honest, find time to waste time, <laughs> make time to waste time. Let me say it like that. Uh, and and I think that uh, we waste more time. And then, and then we complain about uh, our life. And we, we complain, we find friends and we congregate around us a, a similar complaint and uh, this concept of how life should be better. And, uh, you know, one, one prayer does change everything. Uh, we, we see that in uh, Second, Second Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And we talk about the fact that when I make a prayer, the prayer of salvation, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, I'm a sinner. Uh, I'm in need of a Savior. And I, I recognize that, that Jesus is that Savior. He's the one that came into the world. You know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he was born of a virgin and that he did come to this earth uh, on a mission, on purpose. To, to come and to uh, die for us, die for my sins, die for your sins. And he, he died, he was buried three days, he rose again and was seen by more than 500 witnesses and, uh, and ascended back up into heaven is, is right now at this very minute, seated at the right hand of the Father uh, of God himself and he makes intercession. So when I pray, uh, I pray and, and Jesus uh, makes intercession to God for us. And, uh, uh, and, and we see in this verse uh, a very simple, uh, a simple verse. It says, for by grace, for, because of love, you are safe. Because it's important for us to understand that God is love. God is love, and His love, when we get saved, comes into our life, comes into our heart. That's one reason why we get saved, because we realize that life without God is really not life at all. Life, uh, actually one of the promises of salvation is that He'll give us life and He'll give it to us more abundantly so we can have an abundance of life. Not, not, not just, uh, I mean, we could, we could break that down even more and say it's joy, it's peace, it's, it's love. All of those things, that, that those ingredients are a part of who Jesus is. It's a part of who God is. And that same God wants to come into our life. And it's important for us to know that it's not a, a single moment, but
but rather a lifetime, that life that he gives us, we should live it with him, right? In relationship with God. In, I, I, uh, uh, so it says, therefore, by grace are you saved through faith. So I must, I must, I, I receive this grace, this, this change of my life. I receive it by faith when I believe that God is and that not of ourselves. So it's, uh, that, that really separates it from what I'm used to doing. My, my, what I think is right, what I think is the, the, the right way often is not going to be right. So I must go to the Word of God, which is, which is what I receive by faith, because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So I don't even hear. Uh, I can't hear God. I can't hear His plan for my life. I can't even understand His plan for my life if I'm not willing to take in the Word of God. I, I, I think it's important that we do that every day, especially as a Christian. I'm saved, but I need to be hungry for the Word of God. In the spiritual sense, uh, for us to, to even get hungry for the Word of God, we, we need the Spirit of God in us, right? And we need to constantly have a diet uh, filled with worship and, and Word and prayer and relationship, because that's really what it is. Uh, uh, the verse says there, uh, it has that little colon that not of yourself. There's a colon there. It is the gift of God. And, and to further explain that grace, that love of God is the gift of God. And that gift that God gives is what comes into my life. That love comes into my life. And I, I, I think it's so powerful. And uh, I, I like to, to add into this little topic, this little discussion tonight. Uh, Titus 2 verse 7, which is a, a really powerful verse uh, because it really talks about us as a Christian, us as a person. And, and if, if you notice all around us, there's patterns. Uh, there's, there's, uh, I, I have patterns in my life. You have patterns in your life. Around us is a, a world full of patterns. It, re, it, it rotates. Uh, uh, it makes a day and night every day. We have 24 hours in a day. That's a pattern. We, have, we can see the moon has a pattern. The, uh, the earth travels in a pattern in an orbit around the, around the sun. Uh, and the solar system uh, moves in a pattern. And, uh, you know, there are, there's high tide and low tide. There's, there's all kind of patterns that happen. Our heartbeat is a pattern. And, and in, our, in our own life, I, 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 even when we brush our teeth, if we're really trying to break it down uh, to general f uh, feelings or terms, uh, we brush our teeth in patterns. I mean, uh, is uh, s sometimes you might get an owie on, on your if you're right handed or left handed your the hand that you use to brush your teeth, and you have to do use the other hand, uh, and and you get all discombobulated because you don't understand. <laughs> uh, it doesn't you know you're not in there that same routine that same pattern, but uh, but Jesus when he comes into my life, he saves me from my pattern that I'm used to, right? My, my pattern of works. My, my, I, I say it like this sometimes because today I stand before you a choice, uh, uh, a stack of the choices, right? I, I, come, I come before you a stack of decisions. I'm, 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 all those de decisions have stacked up to, to place me in front of you right now. And sometimes maybe that's the same position or the same feeling you have right now in your life. It's like, I'm a stack of decisions, and I don't like any of them. You know, I, I married the wrong person. I, I listened to the wrong this. I did that. I did, you know, whatever it was that, that leads you to today, uh, I'm going to tell you that the, the love of God is here for you. The love of God is here for you now. And, and often this pattern, uh, it says, uh, that, that, that Paul is talking about is, is uh, and that chapter, that whole chapter, I, I, I really hate to just pull that one verse out of there, but that whole chapter talks about all different kind of people have patterns. And, and, and Paul goes on to, uh, 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 to try to give us affirmation so that we would begin to live our life out of a new pattern, out of, out of, uh, to, 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 you know, to change our emotions. Our emotions have a pattern, right? Uh, uh, you know, my, my flesh has a pattern, my, uh, you know, seasons. And, uh, but, but you really want to mess people up. If you really want to mess someone up, it, just change, okay? Change your emotional uh, standpoint. Uh, change uh, your face. I've been really talking about that a lot lately, about how that, 
the, the need to have our face open, right? To, to begin to show to the world around us, to the people around us, especially the clo- ones that are close, to, to begin to show them the love of God that is really in you. Uh, uh, if, if he's in there, he has to come out. Uh, if, if, if God wants to use someone, right, in, uh, to mess up a pattern, to mess up uh, uh, the, whatever's going on around them, whatever, wh- whatever place you find, wherever you're standing, if God wants to mess up everybody around you, he could use you. He could use me because one person can change an entire city. Amen? Come on, one person can, can change a family. One person can change the outlook uh, at, at a business. One, one person can change everything around them. Just one person. Uh, matter of fact, God, God always calls one. He always does that. He'll call Moses to, to go and deliver, the, the, to use to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. He'll, he'll call uh, 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 whoever it is, Peter, to preach, pr- to preach uh, the first sermon. He'll, he'll call you or he'll call me. We can insert our name there, but he's going to call us and he has called us. Uh, 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 so, so if you want to really freak people out, just change. Just change. Uh, so in Matthew, uh, in Matthew 18, 11, and 12, we've, we've talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. And that's uh, uh, Matthew 18, 11. But I wanted to read the first couple of words, the first three words of uh, Matthew 18, verse 12. It says... How think ye? See, because if we're thinking like we used to think, trying to live how we're supposed to live now that we got saved, uh, I'm going to tell you, your thinking is wrong. And uh, because uh, if, if, we're, if we're to change our thinking, our perspective, uh, in this, this co- the context of Matthew 18 right there, uh, G- Jesus or the shepherd leaves everything else that's of value to him to go after the one that is lost. And that's the same mind that Christ had. He left everything that he knew. He left his glory. He took his robes off and he came and was born of a woman to to pursue the purpose of God, which was to seek and to save us, right? Us people, those that are lost, those of us that are saved today. He came to seek you, right? He came looking for you and looking for me. I think that's so powerful because uh, if you really believe that, you, 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 you can be saved. You are saved, okay? And so then if you're saved, I, I challenge you to really begin to live that out, uh, to really begin to think different. Because the kingdom of God is not about everything that we're used to, to knowing. It's not about a dollar. It's not about uh, friends. It's not about uh, all of the things of the world, nice car, all of those things. Uh, are nice. I'm not saying that you can't have those things. I'm just saying that if you know what's important in your life, you would begin to invest your life into the important stuff and begin to stop. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I, I just get tired of wasting time. I get tired of wasting my time and I want to invest my time and my energy into something that will live way beyond me, something of far more importance than anything else that, that I, I thought was important. Important. What, what is it that I think is important? I, I guess that's really where it is. What do you think is important? Because if it's about that one thing in your life and that thing, in, and that's all your focus, uh, I wonder, is it the right focus? I wonder if it's time to change the focus from that and start looking up, okay? Start looking at what, what uh, Jesus has done in your life. Start living like you're saved, amen? I could just say it like that. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I was looking at this verse in the context of, uh, uh, in, in Psalms, the first chapter, and I don't have enough time to read all of that, but the third verse, it says the, the righteous person, the, the, the one that is saved will be like a tree that's planted by a river. And, and it goes on to say that it will always have a leaf, right? And it will always have a fruit uh, because uh, that righteous person, it should be, we should be planted by the source. The source is already in us. And what we, what we, we look for, because <laughs> of the way we used to think, we always look for this stuff outside to be the source when really the source is already here. And if I believe that and I take that knowledge into my life from the Word of God, 
what happens is, you know, a tree that's planted by a river never has to worry about water, okay, because it's right by the source. A tree never has to worry about how big it's going to grow because that's really not within its power to decide. It's in the seed that was already planted by the river. The tree will become whatever it's supposed to become. So I don't have to worry about what I begin to look like. And then I don't have to worry about my leaf because in, in every season, I'll have a leaf. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have what I need every season. And then, and then I don't have to worry about the future because my fruit right, is already predetermined because I focus on the source. And I, I think that's so powerful and freeing, actually. It releases me then to be, to be just in love with God, just, just walking with Him, just be in relationship with Him. You know, even our prayer life changes because we begin to think, uh, I don't need to, to tell God all the stuff I need. I need to begin to just be in relation with Him and let Him worry about those big items that are that are coming you know what he he's already he already knows what i need he already knows what kind of fruit's going to come out of us he knows what we're supposed to be and i need to come into alignment amen with the purpose of god uh, uh so there's there's a i'm going to move on really quick because i'm going to run out of time uh but I, I wanted to give you this thing this one statement I think that will really uh, bring bring relevance uh, to to what I'm saying. There's three kinds of truth in the world. There's my truth. There's your truth, and there is the truth. Okay, and so often my truth and your truth may not line up, but we know where we can go to find the real truth, and that is in the Word of God today. Amen. So uh, we need to be moving forward, and we we need to be looking heavenward and thinking about that as we move forward. Amen. Uh, each truth has a destination. My truth will give me a destination. Your truth will give you a destination. But, but God's truth will give us the best destination. Amen? And it may not look like what you think it should look like. Amen? My thinking has changed. Let me give you just another word as I, uh, uh, I'm running out of time here. But uh, gift of, the gift of God. I want to talk about the gift of God. Uh, this moment right now, this moment is a gift from God. This moment will never happen again. I, I'm talking to you right now and you're listening to me or you're looking at me. This moment will never happen ever again, right? Uh, I say it a lot, but, but we are the gift. We are, we are a gift. <laughs> We're a gift to our, our biggest trouble in our life, the biggest trouble. The thing that you despise the most, you're a gift to that. Uh, <laughs> your relationships, you are a gift to your relationships. You're the one, uh, when you present yourself in the, uh, into that circumstance or that situation, you're the gift for that circumstance or situation. Often uh, we get so tangled up and twisted around in our th uh, what we think that the situation is that we forget that the gift we have in us, right? We are, it is the gift. Of, the love of God is the gift that I have. It's the gift of God in me. Amen. And, and <laughs> sometimes, you know, uh, trouble will always come looking for the gift, right? Trouble comes looking for the gift uh, because we're gifted. <laughs> We've been gifted with something powerful. Uh, uh, do you trust God <laughs> with your, do you trust God with your gift? See, when you, when you have the gift called now in, in the moment, uh, when it doesn't look right, okay? Do you trust God with that gift? And, uh, uh, see, are, are, we, are, we, are we guilty? And I think we're all guilty if we're really honest. We're all guilty of, of, of worshiping the trouble instead of worshiping the Creator. Amen? And see, that's a, that's a, that's a shift in, in our mindset. That we, we need to worship God. We need to worship Him and Him alone. The... the, the uh, you know, sometimes uh, I, I was talking to, to a young man uh, earlier, uh, I think it was this week or the week before, and I was talking to this young man, and uh, we were sitting outside, and I, it would happen to be a, about a half moon up there. It was a clear night. And I said, hey, look at that moon. And I said, have you ever, have you ever thought about how many people are looking at that moon right now? Have you ever thought about, uh, it's just you and I looking at the moon, but there are probably hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of other people at that very moment were looking at the moon. And I said, I really like to look at the moon at night because it reminds me 
uh, the, the moon reminds me that there is, there is something greater. See, because the moon only ref reflects the light of the sun. So there is a, a greater light than the moon. And I, I said it reminds me that I, I might be lesser, but I can reflect something greater, the light of something greater to the world around me, to the, to the people around me, to, the, to, to all that would look. God's, uh, it's important for us to know that the sun right, is greater than I. I. I think it's powerful. The sun is greater than I, just like the sun is greater than the moon. And, and so the sun is greater than my, the love of God. It, it's the love of God that raises me. Amen. It raises me up. God, God's love, the love of God, actually the, the purpose of God is to raise you up. Yeah. Like a candle, he says in another, another scripture, he says he wants to raise you up and place you on a candlestick so that all of the people in the room, a city that's set on a hill cannot be hit. He wants to raise us up to a higher place. He, not, not so that we can have glory, so that the glory that is in us can be seen by others. Amen. So it's God's love, it's, it's, it's God's grace, and that, that love and that grace is greater than my past. Amen. Uh, and, and we, we, I'm, I got to, I got to wrap this up here. I'm running out of time, but, but it says, uh, you know, we, we're to live in a, in a, <laughs> I think this is really a challenge. I, I used to go to Planet Fitness and work out and in, at Planet Fitness, they have this uh, little bell. It's called the, uh, no judgment bell. And so if you have this, uh, you, you, you tend to grunt or do something too much or you, you know, try to show off in there. Someone goes, rings the bell, just to remind you that you're not to be judging others. And uh, <laughs> what, what a powerful thought, if it were only possible, okay? Uh, the problem is, is that, that I think uh, uh, we, we live in a society. We live in, our, I, I guess, we're, sometimes we're our own worst enemy because God has set us free. God has delivered us. God has brought us to a place where, where he wants to raise us up. And he's really waiting for us to become a partner with him for the purpose that he has already called us for. And uh, I, I just want to leave that right there with you. And uh, we are all spending uh, too much time looking at the wrapping and forgetting about the gift that's inside. So, so change your focus from the wrapping and begin to focus on the relationship which is building inside of you. Amen. Uh, let me just pray with you right there. Uh, uh, Lord, I just ask, God, that you would come and touch us. And Lord, that you would help us to shift our focus, Lord, off of changing everything else and begin to change our minds and our hearts, Lord, that we can begin to walk out, that we could shift out of our old patterns, God, and become, become the, the light and become salt, Lord, to become focused, on the things that are really most important to the kingdom of God, that we can let go of things that are of little or no importance for the kingdom of God. And Lord, that we could stop wasting time. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm really excited about what God is doing here at Breakthrough, and I want to encourage you uh, to, to drop us a message below on this video, wherever, whatever platform you're watching us on. And uh, go to our website at mybreakthrough.online and uh, right there on the, on the home page, you can subscribe uh, to our YouTube. Uh, uh, you can uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe. to. We have a podcast. Uh, we have all kinds of things that are going on uh, there. We have a prayer wall if you need prayer. And if you're in Rockford, Illinois, we would love for you to come be a part of our family uh, at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Come on out. We have great worship. And a good word uh, after that. We look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless. Have a great night.